Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Dr. Psych Mom Show. Today, we're going to be talking about whether there are really men who do, quote, everything in the way that women do, quote, everything. Of course, there are, but many women tell me there aren't. So I figured I would share a bit about what I've learned throughout my career working with couples and individuals uh, in order to two things really validate the experience of men who are in this situation, who for reasons I'll discuss frequently feel ashamed and don't share about what's going on with anybody, and B, uh, just to help people interrogate their gender biases, which is a big part of listening to the Dr. Psych Mom show for you, hopefully, because that's a major piece of feedback that I get from both genders is that they never understood how women slash men thought um, until they listened, you know, so that's a big component of what I do. Uh, Please do subscribe before we get any further. My most recent subscriber episode was, well, I had one on why would your partner want to make you happy if you never act happy? And then most recently, I had another one that I honestly can't remember now. Um, Let's see. It's when you cannot talk in couples counseling freely about all topics and why this happens. Um, And of course, if you can't talk freely in couples counseling about everything that's going on, then it's going to be um, not as useful to put it mildly. So we talk about that. All right. So what do I mean by doing everything? So what women usually mean when they say that they do everything is that not only do they have a job, sometimes they don't, sometimes they're stay at home and they say they basically just do everything to make the house run. But increasingly, more women are working and are equal earners, if not higher earners, like 30% of women are primary breadwinners, I think, according to the most recent statistics. So they there are definitely women that do mostly everything. So we don't want to... Um, you know, what uh, the same counselors who talk about I feel statements talk about never saying always or never. Well, you know what? You could say always and never. You heard it here first. <laughs> you know, because if literally a video camera, if, 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 your, if your home was a reality TV show and everybody would be like, why is that woman doing everything? Then you're doing everything, right? I mean, like, let, let's be real and not be stuck on semantics or bullshit. So it, everything means the house care. The child care, the housework, the child care, the cooking, the cleaning, the figuring out who has to call a handyman for this or that. Maybe he mows the lawn every two weeks. Maybe he mows it every two months. Maybe he mows it every never. And if he's also unemployed, then you really have a good case that you do everything. I hear you. Right. And frequently, you know, he is in in some of these situations. The man is always between jobs or he's always about to lose a job or he always just lost a job. And what's going on with these men? Frequently, there's addiction, there's depression or there's ADHD or a mix of any of those. But, but there are men who are the ones who do everything too. They just don't verbalize it as much. Why? Because they're ashamed. They're just as ashamed as the 20% of women, but uh, probably 30% of women in couples counseling, who are the constant sexual initiators. They're ashamed because this defies the conventional gender narrative. And people don't like to stick out in bad ways. And, And so a man that marries a woman that literally does barely anything around the house doesn't work and barely engages with the kids and there are those men in those situations are incredibly embarrassed to talk about it to anybody because all these guys were like oh I wouldn't even know where the bread was in the fridge if my lovely wife you know didn't point it out haha those men are like proud of the fact that the woman is so competent at the homemaking sphere so it's just like the women who are like oh my god I can't even take off a sock this is like a joke on TikTok where women like take off a sock and the man like attacks them to have sex, not attacks in a bad way, attacks in a good way. (laughs) Like he's like, you know, frothing at the mouth because she's even taking off a sock. And that's like a joke based on how the guy's so attracted to her that anytime she takes off any piece of clothing, in this case, she could be in a nasty like robe with curlers and whatever. She takes off a sock and he wants to have sex. So that's the joke. It's like my husband wants me so much that even this would make him want it. And so the same kind of joke like people don't talk um anymore about the good aspect the women who are proud when their husband is like oh man I couldn't survive without or I couldn't even make myself a sandwich like nowadays it's thought that that would always be bad like why can't you make yourself a fucking sandwich because a lot of couples relationships are based with pride on her having the homemaking sphere and him having the work outside the house sphere that's still a thing 
But people who are happy in their relationships, uh, my friend DSO calls it the vocal minority is the ones who are unhappy. So people who are, are resentful that their husband doesn't know how to make a sandwich, when of course he does know how to make a sandwich, he's like just like making a joke, he isn't going to die if you divorce him. I never saw a guy yet who after divorce died of starvation because he was unable to figure out how to eat. So anyway, and there are still many, many couples, often more conservative or traditional couples where the man brags in this way about the woman's ability to be a good homemaker and she's actually happy about it. And it's the equivalent of the idea of how repellent it would seem to women in unhappy relationships or with bad sex lives, that whole TikTok about taking off the sock, they would be like, oh my God, what an animal. Like her boundaries are being violated. Yeah, but like the woman making the TikTok is laughing. My husband loves me so much. He's so attracted to me that he's so into even me taking off a sock. So anyway, uh, the idea that you would marry a woman or marry a man, so marry a woman who cannot do basically anything, is like just as upsetting as it is to marry a man who doesn't want any sex. You know, because it goes so against the conventional narrative of like the woman as the competent uh, homemaker and child, um, you know, child whisperer, you know, loving mother, attentive mother, baking cookies, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, am I saying that this is how everything should be or whatever? No, just, I mean, literally, like, I'm just, get, I mean, I don't get a lot of people who listen to the podcast for super long and then say, oh my God, you're not PC because, you know, you'd be in a coma if you didn't know I wasn't PC by now. But so, of course, of course, there's so many people who like to split the homemaking right down the middle. Wonderful, cool. But there's also the idea that a lot of men still marry a woman who's going to be a quote, good mother. That's reality, you know, and women marries a man who's going to be a good father. And those things mean different things to different people. But the idea, so, so, okay, so what does it look like in this situation? It's usually a woman who has depression, ADHD, substance abuse, or all three. What did I just say that is also for men who are in the same situation? So thing, depression um, doesn't know any gender, you know? I mean, of course, more women are in fact depressed than men, but also women have fewer, they have a lower prevalence of ADHD. There could be discussions about diagnosis in men versus women. Either way, in terms of what's diagnosed, uh, men more with ADHD, women more with depression. And substance abuse, I assume, uh, is is a cross, you know, is a cross gender. But I don't remember the exact statistics on that one. Doesn't matter if you have an itching, a hankering to know, Google it. Prevalence of substance abuse rates across gender. But the, the point is, is that I see a lot of men who go out and they make, you know, money in their job and then they come home and they cook meal and then they clean it up and then they do bath time and then they do bedtime. And what is the woman doing frequently nowadays with smartphones? She's on her phone and she's like, saying that she's doing something for the family, but she's um, either not, or she's doing something that could also be done by him in two seconds. So a lot of women who are depressed will say like, oh, I'm shopping online for clothes for the kids. But uh, the kids don't really need any more clothes, like they have enough clothes. And she's doing it for the dopamine hit, the small dopamine hit of scrolling and purchasing. So that's like one that I see, or she's like researching. I'm researching activities for the children. Well, hell, who can tell you you're not, right? Research is an endless activity. I know this from graduate school. <laughs> You could always be researching more. So, you know, while men who are more depressed will be like video gaming or they'll be just watching TV or, or whatever, women are more likely to say, because gender roles indicate that they should be more um, embarrassed about not being um, present with the children versus men, and that is bad, et cetera, et cetera. But anyway, um, so they will more likely say that they're doing something for the kids. And of course they may well be, but the thing that they're doing isn't like feeding the kids or bathing the kids. That they really can't do because they're either depressed or they're drinking or they can't concentrate on it or, or whatever. So who ends up in these situations? Men that are what I've called the workhorse or the overfunctioner. 
So they're very codependent. They usually had a mother who struggled with drinking or depression or ADHD or grief or trauma, and the mother just couldn't function. And so the dad either did everything or the son did everything. Uh, so he knows this. He knows this is a very, um, very familiar, obviously dysfunctional dynamic. And he just starts to do it. And even in the early stages, she was like tired all the time or like she was overwhelmed or she was like, uh, you know, she was in college or graduate school and she just couldn't do everything. And things were going to change after she didn't have classes on her plate or after she didn't have work on her plate. But nothing has ever changed. It's only gone one direction. She's done less and less and less. So there are men who do everything, you know, and this is the truth. And they're just like there's women that do everything. And now is the woman still, can she still be a loving mother? Sure. And men in that situation can still be a loving father. The kids will come over and cuddle with them, let's say, on the couch, you know. Um, but but they uh, get all their needs met by the other parent, really, except for love, you know. And, and frequently, though, unfortunately, if a person is very depressed, they are angry. They do snap at the kids. They are asleep or virtually asleep. And so they can't really provide uh, love that well either but they do love the child and they exist in the world so that is a net benefit for the child versus not having a parent of course but in terms of what do they um, do in order to you know people say love is a verb so do they love as a verb the kid not really you know because they can't so in this situation it really you got to refer back to my podcast on what's helping and what's enabling and also what to do when your wife is depressed because that can be the same for substance abuse or depression or anything you got to get them into treatment you got if this really resonates with your experience and uh, many men in this situation you can refer back to my elephant in the room podcast they don't tell anybody because again it's very very embarrassing to have their family or their friends know that they not only are working outside the home but they are basically also coming in and doing 100% pretty much of, of the meaningful activities that keep the children alive, you know, isn't, isn't something that you really want to advertise. You want to help your wife save face. You know, you don't want people to look at her like that, especially if you grew up in a dysfunctional family and you're used to keeping a big secret of one parent or both parents' dysfunction. So in this situation, you got to go to therapy, would be good, um, and you got to start talking to somebody about this elephant in the room, like I said on the Elephant in the Room podcast. And um, if you're in couples counseling already, we refer back to my other. So you see, I've been doing a theme recently because more and more I've realized that what people struggle with is secrets. You know, when you grew up in a home where there were secrets, then you have secrets in your marriage. Sometimes it's the secret is that one person drinks every night, you know, a bottle of wine. Sometimes the secret is that y'all don't have any physical relationship. Sometimes the secret is that your partner is just like not a functional adult, you know, and all they do is kind of lay around. But these are all secrets, and people who were raised with secrets in their family of origin end up with secrets in their relationship. So if you're a man in this situation, getting to therapy and talking to somebody about what's going on, they could talk you through it, to talk you through kind of like what you should do next. Frequently, you've got to put down, put your foot down and say, you've got to get into treatment. we got to get you into a therapy therapist's office. we got to get you in with a psychiatrist. Maybe there's medication that can help. Uh, you, you're not doing anything, you know? I mean, I, I feel for you, and I know this is and what you are trying to do as, as a person, but you don't, you don't do anything, you know? I mean, you say that you're doing something all the time on your phone, but you haven't helped with bedtime or bath time or whatever the case may be in years. We don't really have a physical relationship at all. We don't have a romantic relationship. We don't do this. We don't do that. You know, like you got to come out and say it, you know, instead of keeping it a secret. So to summarize, yes, there are men in this situation, and now I've given you quite a good picture with detail about the men who end up in this situation. Are there men married to women that are completely emotionally healthy that are in this situation? Obviously not. I mean, you know, no, no human doesn't want to, in a best case, no healthy human being that is not struggling with some sort of disorder 
doesn't want to help in their home. I mean, that just isn't a thing. Not men and not women. So based on how you were raised and the gender norms, there are men who think that their um, main thing to do is home project and uh, the outside and power washing the house and doing the yard and this and that. And the woman is upset they don't do enough laundry. Fine. That's something that you can negotiate, you know, maybe in couples counseling. Maybe you may not even need couples counseling. But if, if you have a man that doesn't do any of it, doesn't give a shit about anything in the home at all, that's likely somebody who's depressed, you know, and the same thing for a woman. You know, there is there is not really there are not really women that have like a philosophical reason. They're a healthy person with a philosophical reason that you do literally everything in the home. That's not accurate. So if that's what you've been thinking, that's wrong. That's always somebody who's struggling with either depression, addiction, uh, post-trauma, ADHD, whatever the case may be. So healthy human beings want to help make their environment uh, a healthy, safe, and uh, productive place for themselves and their children. That's true. I mean, like, I have gerbils. Even, like, you know, healthy gerbils are trying to, like, dig tunnels in their home. Like, like a healthy mammal is, like, doing something. They're not just sitting around. So men and women are in a situation where the partner just basically sits around. Sometimes they work eight hours a day and then they sit around. And if that's the case, then you can, uh, you know, tell yourself that their salary is, is worth it. But really, if they're working eight hours and then they're just sitting around before and afterwards, there's usually something going on. This isn't, this isn't normal. You know, that is not normal and healthy to just literally sit around and do nothing, even if you can rally to work for eight hours. And many people with, quote, high functioning depression or alcoholism can do that. But that's the high functioning part is they could actually have a job. But then the rest of the time, they're not doing anything. And they're kind of living almost in their own filth, if you would let them. That is not normal. That needs to be thought about. And that needs to be helped and addressed and confronted directly in a way that it wasn't in your family of origin, which is how you got into this mess, unfortunately. And I have the most empathy for you because you didn't know anything different, but now you got to know something different so that your children don't end up perpetuating the same cycle and enabling the same kind of person and being in the same kind of marriage with an elephant in the room of this. All right. Well, I, I hope this was useful and I'll talk to you all soon. Bye-bye.